Signal processing is about extracting information. Signals are everywhere. Even here at the waterhole in the Rhino Sanctuary in Gulia in Kenya. So I'm standing here in the heat. All the animals are sleeping now. I can see a few giraffes waiting here to have a drink. But otherwise, it's quite calm here in the park now. Only professors work at this time. So what can you do with signal processing at the waterhole in the Rhino Sanctuary? Yeah, let me give you some examples. First, suppose we had to put a microphone here. A microphone that listens to the sound around here. And it's quite lively in the night. And that microphone gives you a signal, a sound signal, that can be used for many purposes. So let's have a look at the signal first. It looks quite characteristic. It starts smoothly, it lasts for about half a second, and then it ends abruptly. If we add the envelope of the signal, we get a kind of characteristic description of the Rhino sound that can be used to distinguish it from other sounds here, like lions or elephants. We can also analyze the sound using the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform shows you the dis distribution of energy over frequencies. And as you see in the plot here, we can see such uh, certain features that certain frequencies have higher amplitude than others. But it's quite noisy, it's hard to interpret and hard to make classifiers of sound based on this. So suppose that we smooth this function, then we get something called a spectral estimate. So the spectrum is easier to interpret because it's smoother, we can see the fundamental frequency and the, the harmonics. And this can be used also to build a classifier of how a rhino sounds. But the spectrum shows the average frequency over time. It's even more interesting to compute how the frequency content varies over time. So suppose now we take a sliding window, so we have a batch of data of a sound signal and then we move this batch as a sliding window over time. On each batch we compute the spectral estimate. Now we get the three-dimensional signal here and this plot shows with color how much energy is at each frequency and each time instant. Here you can see how the fundamental frequency varies over time in a quite characteristic way and how the harmonics are split uh, over time and frequency. This is also a description of Rhino sound. Let's proceed with another example. Suppose that you put two microphones here. You can use these two microphones to uh, beamform the sound, so you can at, uh, increase the attention in a certain direction, and you can also find the sound source of any sound. This is a well-known technique used for many applications. Just like you use your own ears. I mean, you have two microphones here, and you are quite sensitive to finding direction of sound, and also to uh, increase your attention to that direction. So we can, for instance, put four microphones here, as the following picture shows. And these four microphones can be used to beamform the sound attention according to the lobes in the picture. But how can we estimate the direction of arrival, for instance, from two microphones? Well, this picture shows two sound uh, sources, or rather the same rhino sound, but in two microphones that are closely spaced. So what you can see is a time delay between these two signals. And this time delay is proportional to the sinus of the direction of arrival. So when you listen to something straight ahead, you have the same phase in both ears. And if it's coming from the right, the signal is coming first to the right ear and then to the left ear. That's how you process data yourself. But that can be do done in a computer. So, what can we do more? So we can classify the sound source to find the rhinos. We can compute the direction of arrival. <coughs> we also have the magnitude or the signal strength from the rhino that can be used to find the distance to it, approximately. To this you can add a filter. A filter that follows how the rhino moves over time. For that we need a motion model. 
The motion model tells how the gyno moves. It can be very simple, saying that the gyno moves with constant speed over time in almost the same heading. But the heading and the speed can change slowly. Using a Kalman filter, you can put together all your uh, est estimates of direction of arrival and distance to a trajectory, which can be used for many purposes, research and, and monitoring the water holes. I can show you an example how we can monitor how vehicles are moving. So there are roads here in the sanctuary and there are vehicles coming regularly. So the vehicles have a quite characteristic sound, easy to find. And it's important to monitor how the, rhino, how the vehicles are coming. And in this picture here, we have used four microphones and one motorcycle. And the goal is to track how the angle of arrival uh, varies over time. And as you can see in the animation here, the beam for which we find the direction is quite narrow and accurate most of the time. There are a few outliers, but mostly we find the direction of arrival with high accuracy. Just a few examples of what you can do with signal processing here at the waterhole in Kenya. Thank you.